We went over uh, template strings. We went over using script X templates. But so far, we haven't really like delved into a real build process for Vue. Um, so we're kind of working our way from like the simplest and easiest to kind of you know, understand and use right out of the gate to a little bit more complicated of a build process, but much more useful. Um, we're going to start off with Vue CLI, but then we're eventually going to use Nuxt too. And I think Nuxt is really, really cool. I'll explain all the reasons why Nuxt is really cool coming up. So, okay, why are we using a CLI or a Vue CLI in general? Uh, because we can use build processes that allow us to use great features like ES6 or SAS uh, or any other libraries and bring them in very, very easily. Um, in CodePen, we've got those little preprocessor tabs. That's really cool, but like we can't do that in the normal build process, just like select from a dropdown. Um, so we need to have those kind of build processes in there if we want to use stuff like ES6. And ES6 is pretty awesome, so we definitely probably do. Um, we're going to build and concatenate single file templates, which are super awesome, and I'm not biased at all. Here are all the trophies in the world. <laughs> um, I think uh, single file templates are, are just like a really, really great workflow. So we'll look at those in this section. Um, it's so that we can not load all of our files at startup. Sometimes we want a lazy load component. Sometimes we need to do asynchronous operations. And uh, with Vue CLI, that really allows us to, that helps us do all of that, not just have everything on the page at once. Um, so that's really great. We can do things like server-side rendering, code splitting. We can get performance metrics about our application. Um, all of these things are really important and really awesome. Um, we can also have build and prod versions. Previously, we've just been using a script that was like the non-minified version and then the minified version. But in real life, what we'd need to do is we'd you know, minify, concatenate, uh, do all of these things to our scripts, and then we'd also be using a different version of that script when we're pushing to production. So this allows us to do that pretty easily. So the first thing that we'd want to do is npm install dash g. This is, uh, installs it globally, view CLI, or a yarn add global uh, view CLI, whichever your preference. Um, so I think everybody should actually run this command so that they have it on their machine before we get going. Um, I've already run this, so I'm not going to run it again. Um, yeah, I'll give you a second. Then for the purposes of this class today, we're going to do view init webpack simple my project or whatever you want your project to be named. Um, you can also just use webpack. Actually, I would recommend actually using webpack. But since we're not going to do the thing that webpack itself has that webpack simple does not are things like uh, testing and uh, ESLint configs and things like that that we're not using during this class. So I'm going to do webpack simple today. But in the future, you probably want to be using webpack. If you're more comfortable with Browserify, there's a Browserify template too. So you could also do view init, um, you know, browserify or something like that. So there's a few different templates. Is it okay if I use the webpack instead of webpack simple? Yeah, of course. Uh, there's just a few more options that it'll take you through that. Yeah, uh, but already, yeah. I've already passed that. But as yeah. far as the rest of the course is concerned, it sure, sure. Yeah, that it's totally up. Yeah, it's totally up to you. I'm using webpack simple for the purposes of teaching, but webpack is great and it has things like, you know, testing um, involved. So then we'd CD into that directory. We'd run yarn or npm install, depending. Use one or the other. Don't go back and forth like I just did in this uh, thing. So use yarn add or use um, yarn. I, I typically use yarn. Um, and then I'm going to say npm run dev. And that will immediately give us a dev server. And the dev server is also a really nice thing about Vue CLI because I can work with it and have it, you know, be a production instead of just like hosting it with some sort of like fought, put throwing my files in the browser. That's not actually a real build process. So it, it reflects what the user would see a little bit better. Um, and I mentioned these single file templates. What am I talking about? Um, so usually we've been either using a template in that string or we've been wrapping it in that strange script tag. That's not actually how we would use it in real view applications. What we'd have is this template here where we have all of our HTML and all of our markup. We have to return a single, um, a single, a single element. It doesn't matter that it's a div. It could be a span. It could be an SVG. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But you have to return just one. That's the same in React. 
uh, for now, I think it's changing. Um, and then we have a script tag where we're going to export default um, and all of our component logic will go in there. We're, we'll also need to import uh, components into here, which I'll show you how to do in a little bit. Um, but we'd basically have that script tag and then we'd have this style tag. So this template that with the base of dot view, it's going to be a new file type, a new file extension called dot view, and it will have all this stuff in it. And what I really like about it is that there's no context switching. We have everything in one place that we're working on it in just one location. Um, so we can go in between our HTML and our script like we were doing in CodePen really fast, and we can just do that all in one file, and it stays really, really encapsulated. New files mean no context, context switching, yay. Okay, so we would import new from components new. So if I have like a parent component and I need to bring another component into this component, and again, if you're familiar with other frameworks, it's very much the same. Um, we're importing that thing in, and then I'm saying in the export defaults, the components that we're using here is new, and that new will allow me to use in this template, this new tag. I'm going to do some live coding where you can see this stuff for yourself, but this is just some base premises.